You ready? No, but yes. <laughs> okay, let's start off with the fact that the episode was unironically related to Omega and yes, Crosshair. Yeah, I know. Hmm. Did I got that right? That's the question because I don't remember what I what oh I predicted. My God. I cried. I'm gonna say that I, I slightly cried at the end. I couldn't leave it at that. But well, we're, yeah. We're gonna start from the top. <laughs> First of all, I did like the constant banter on things. As I said on the stream, it's like we have Omega's very optimistic side, while Crosshair has his more, uh, how would you put it, less optimistic. Less op. Yeah, he just gets straight to the point, and I don't blame him for that as his character <laughs> if anything i did like how they were bantering and how one didn't like the other strategy though it is interesting how crosshair just kept going with omega strategy which kept going all over the place no kid it's hard to be nice in a world that's so cruel <laughs> it's just really that hard i mean she can try so many things but in the end it's gonna have to come down to the final result well, that's the thing. That's a reflection of our world, unironically. But, yeah, it, like, it was a pain. Yeah. Eventually, I mean, Omega kind of just saw it like, okay, this isn't working. Uh, Crosshair, let's do it your way. And it's like, finally. <laughs> and then just starts blasting. In a way, you could say he's kind of like Wrecker also. Like, he just wants to start doing something. <laughs> I mean, it's not more of that. It's that he views Omega's strategy as, well, very annoying and counterproductive. Because had they gone straight to <laughs> his plan, yeah, they would have avoided a lot of the stuff. They would have not have to go find credits, which obviously took them a while. And they wouldn't have been traced down as easily. But then again, who knows? But it's just interesting that he kept kind of playing along. Almost like he wanted to see Omega fail, just so it's like, yep, I had the point. I just like it when she was trying to bribe. Then what was it? She, she re they realized they had to get like 30,000 credits, and he was like, nice one. And he, she's like, stop it. And she thought that. Oh, it yeah. It so hilarious. <laughs> it's like the I told you so kind of thing. It's like, who the hell wants to hear that? <laughs> she was like, just quiet. <laughs> it's hilarious. As for her being able to outwit in a card game, that was pretty fun. It just re-shows back to her intelligence. Yes, and then and then it goes down to that one captain that we saw. I mean, then again, he really wasn't really much of anything. <laughs> He's just a casual, all right, I'll let you do things, but you must pay me. Until he loses, then he he's obviously is pissed by that. He tries to play it okay. off as a good sport, but in reality, he was just seething when, when that happened. Yeah, no kidding. He would have been more of a jackass if he had won. But it was all a setup. The moment that they mentioned the crash, I mean, all the Imperials would have uh, been 100% like, all right, who's the more suspicious people? And by the way Omega looked, I think it already gave it away. There's no way that Hemlock wouldn't have sent alert to every single outpost that, hey, look for this child. Yeah, no kidding, honestly. That's, I guess that's what also caught my attention, like, he's saying that how the, those shuttles were being, like, there was no shuttle upon arrival be coming in, so, like, I feel like that's a real, like, eye-wide opening for them, for, especially this year, no alerts have been out, so... Yeah, I definitely think um, he was already more or less... He was suspicious on Omega, but I think it solidified it when it's like a random shuttle just happens to crash or not even arrive to the station and all. So it's like, okay, yep, this is a problem. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, and then we get to have a little moment between Hamlock and Nalase, which is she's now back in prison. <laughs> I can't it's, say prison, but just behind bars again. Yeah, it's no surprising. I mean, I like that she tries to play it off that suspicious how I've been with Omega and nothing like this. But when your assistant does this, the result magically appears. It's like Hemlock. I mean, Hemlock's not buying into that crap, but it would be ironically point, funny if somehow 
they capture Omega and somehow uh, Nalise was able to pull off that. Yeah, she doesn't have the right M cells. And it's like, what the hell is Hemlock going to do? He really can't do nothing at this point, honestly. Well, he's, he's backed into a corner for now. But he yeah. he's for sure on the mark for them. Because I was very off that we know that they're tracing them. And that Omega had sent that signal. So we know that they're going to oh, get attacked cool. next episode. Oh, that's that's true, honestly. Dang. That, that, that's going to be sad, but oh well. <laughs> I mean, so. it was bound to happen at some point to have a confrontation with Hemlock in a more battle-oriented one. But the thing is, we don't have tech. Um has a possible way of trying to analyze different routes of escape or something like that. We'd have to rely on Crosshair and Hunter and Omega putting their heads together. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. I mean, it's not saying there's nothing bad with them. They just don't have enough. They don't have an, as much enough as Tech would be able to find a way out of the situation. Now, the ending sequence, because honestly, ah! that, was a, that was a nice way of just bridging the gap between that it. Was so, that made me tear up so bad. It, it's it's so interesting how only four, ep- it took only like three episodes, four, no, sorry, four. <laughs> four episodes for them to reunite. Yeah, but, but of that course re- it took only a year. <laughs> but that reunion, I mean... I think what's setting up is that Omega's going to tell them, hey, this is what's going on over there. And they're probably going to tell Rex and Echo. And they're going to probably have what we had predicted back in season one, the Clone Rebellion. Um, okay. And here's my thing. I, I mean, of course, like I talked about in the stream that we had last night, the reunion of the, three, of the brothers. Yeah, very hostile. <laughs> I wasn't expecting, I, I don't know why, I literally said last night that, hey, Rector isn't going to be too upset, but because of his reaction to, I'm a little actually scared of what's going to happen. <laughs> argument might break out. I doubt an argument would last for any long, because they're going to get attacked, and then obviously they're all going to be completely that's scattered. What's, that's what's probably what's going to have to come down to. They will have an argument, but then like something, it's going to cause something. <laughs> I mean, what are they going to do? The fact that it's Crosshair's assistance that helped Omega get to them is like, they have to acknowledge that part. Yeah, that's... So this is the second time that Crosshair... This is the second time Crosshair saved Omega, in a sense. The first time was when she was about to drown. Oh, that was fun. So this is the second time she's technically saved her. Yeah. But overall, it's, pretty pretty good episode. It definitely, I, I like that. Yeah, it's that different approach. It's basically Omega having to concede that okay, everything she's done is not working out. Let's just go with Crosshair's method. <laughs> it was someone's different approach. We just didn't know. As I, honestly, I thought it would be so funny if, like you said, if it was going to be Hemlock's like different approach on how to find Omega, but I, um, it wasn't that case. So. No, I mean honestly, that would have been way more funny. I, I thought so. <laughs> I thought that would be <laughs> Send bounty hunters fail. Hmm. Maybe we should take a different approach. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? But my only thing is that, okay, so yeah, this episode, it fairly really was no good. Even though, I feel, unfortunately, I feel like some people will still call this a filler. There's no filler in this. They can go to hell if it, if they call this filler. <laughs> I really the whole not, point of the really episode wasn't. is a character growth. This is a character growth episode with also them. Their ship was damaged, so they can't say filler for shit. That is, I will say that. That ship was damaged when they had went into hyperspace. Them arriving oh, no. into getting a new ship was, is, is part of the story. It's just people can complain about, well, they should have done this sooner. It's like Omega's whole thing has always been trying to take the more peaceful route. It's just this one was for once not going at all right. So it's like, all right, well, fuck it. Violence it is. All the while, 
All the while, Crosshair woke up and wanted to choose violence the entire time. I'm not gonna lie, when uh, Omega was telling Crosshair that they were gonna they were gonna meet up at a secluded plan, I'm like, please don't do this at Tip Pat Boo. This is too early to be doing this on Pat Boo. <laughs> uh, no, I doubt they were but gonna if, go there. If that shit... they did, but they didn't though, because if they did, it would have been too early as to like that's exactly how they found Pat Boo. <laughs> nah, that'd be stupid. I, I. I... Omega would have been really stupid been to even crazy. do that, so no, I doubted that. But I also was like, are they going to fucking Tatooine? That'd be hilarious if they did. <laughs> I don't, uh... Random Tatooine visit. <laughs> That's what. But luckily, we won it, so all was good there. Yeah, overall, it was a pretty good episode. I guess if I, if I had uh... any final thoughts, it'd be. Yeah, I liked it. It gave an interesting character development of Crosshair and Omega. I don't think Crosshair learned anything. He just learned that Omega's ideas can work, but not in this scenario. Yeah, and then, okay, and then I guess the one thing I, I can really say is that, like, again, he really does need her as much as he wants to say that, oh, like, just, like, we'll just have to leave things behind and all that. I was like, no, you actually need someone to be there with you. Because <laughs> he would not have done anything on his own. I mean, he That's wouldn't have thing. gone very far. Exactly. It just wouldn't be enough. Well, then again, and I do not know what uh, Omega's plan was going to be for the escape. Whenever, like, because the, the escape in episode three was just because things had to happen. Not because she wanted it to. And in a way, you can still, I mean, I guess you can still say that really Nalase was really the one that really helped Omega escape also. Because well, she Nalase was the one has that been protecting her, like, the Omega the whole time, so if anything, yeah, Nalase is the only reason Omega made it th this far. Yeah, so. But overall, I still think uh, 10 out of 10. Like, it's not a terrible episode. It, it is pretty good, and it shows... More development for Omega. Now learning from Crosshair, of all people. Oh, yeah. So this is a good 10 out of 10. And I am not ready. Now, again, I'm not ready for next week's episode because it's called a return. So someone is going to be coming back. Someone is going to be, either someone's going to be returning or like someone that we don't know or, or something. Here's the worst Which scenario, so though. The return. Of... Omega is it's returned the... back to Captured. Stop. Stop. No, not again. I, I get it. This first one didn't work out for you, but this one, it can't be that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be terrible if that actually was true. <laughs> but then again, it would work for six and seven because they're called infiltration and then extraction. So like, but then again, no, I don't want that. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs>